play. Elected to receive first. Please. Tamiris and Taylor Dent alongside me, Rob Koenig. Djokovic is a player that does not enjoy it when the crowd is cheering against him. He loves the crowd to be for him. They often aren't. We'll Please. see if it affects him at all in this finals. It's going to be interesting to see how much Novak goes to the forehand of Del Potro. It's risky business going there, right? Because that's that's the one certainty. Whereas if you go weak to Del Potro's forehand, he's going to gain control of the point. Ooh. And he's going there first. I guess what he's trying to do is open up the backhand and look to attack the backhand because every first ball has been directed at the uh, Del Potro forehand. Thank you, players are ready. The danger there is Del Potro doesn't mind the ball far away from him. He's got those long arms. He gets a lot of power, as you saw in that forehand pass, but Djokovic able to handle the volley. throughout the, the duration of the tournament. Clearly visible for the players, 25 seconds between points. that Djokovic was appearing in a record tying eighth US Open final. Perhaps surprising his records only two and five. Of course both Lendl and Sampras appeared in eight US Open finals. Pete more successful than Let's Yvonne. First serve. Lendl did it in consecutive years, which was, is pretty amazing. It was. To the backhand First slice. Game. 15 love. I agree with Jimmy. I think this match is going to hinge on whether Djokovic can prevent this two ball combo from happening. The, the big serve and the big forehand from Del Potro. If he's able to rack up cheap points, it's going to be tough for Djokovic. Of course, Novak, one of the best returners the sport has ever seen. Uh, will he be able to neutralize the Del Potro serve? Of course, being one of the defenders, how is he going to handle this guy's forehand? Just having a look at returns made throughout the tournament for Novak against all his other opposition. First serve returns made, 85%. 
we know when he makes them, he makes he meaningful been, returns. Now, i got to see who he beat. I mean, is there players that didn't have big servers, all of them, or no? Or there's some big servers in that mm -hmm. group of players. Any big service, Jimmy? 14, so I would expect no. him not to do quite as well today against Del Potro. What would a nice barometer be then, percentage wise? I would think 70% would probably be you're, you're returning very well, especially against the big server. Del Potro had to play Isner, so obviously his numbers aren't going to be as strong as Djokovic. That's you. Again, Del Potro. Sending out a strong message. <laughs> yeah. That One thing was hot, Gimel man. Facet. Just trying to unlock you know, the Djokovic serve. It would be, be an easy proposition. Only one player has been able to break Novak twice in a match. And that was the first round match against Martin Fuksovic. Chase review, but line. you can just see if Del Potro hits out. those balls big and he doesn't get them away from Djokovic. Djokovic is just staying tight. He's able to hit through it. I mean, he hit a huge forehand there. And if this missed, it's going to miss by nothing. The thing that's Love interesting to me is team. one of the reasons I thought Djokovic has been playing so well is he's kept the length. So doesn't miss, and he's hitting it within 12 inches of the baseline. Uh -huh. Del Potro is also hitting the ball in the exact same place. He's the first guy keeping that length right with him so far. How's that for court tennis? Love 13. It's nice to see Djokovic Del Potro in his second remaining. major final. But it, the last one was in 2009, so it was so long ago, you almost mm. wouldn't have a memory of that. Thank you. He's come out absolutely relaxed, playing his game right out of the gates. You do not see Del Potro miss that slice very often and that was one in the mid court where try the two handed well it was high too yeah you know it wasn't like a low one you know we can understand why he slices the low ones just can't bend those wrists like he used to but uh yeah that was that was in the wheelhouse I think of that pattern, backhand to backhand. If you're Delpo, I think you want to. I think he's bench. testing it out. You know, yeah. he, he hit a lot of slices there. I know he normally hits a lot of slices, but he didn't have to there. So I, I wonder if he thinks that maybe just keeping the ball low on Djokovic is going to get him to hit the ball up and, and be able to turn the point around. Forty 
13. First serve, first shot combination, so important for both these guys today. That is the modern day tennis player. Average rally, less than five shots. How do you like that? That's the danger of going to Delpo's forehand. He went there one too many times. And Delpo, when he laces a forehand, it's amazing to watch. I don't know how that goes in all the time. It's no spin, Thank really. His grip looks Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. a little bit old-fashioned, a little bit on the Thank eastern you. side. Please. Best running forehand. Yeah, maybe. Sampras had a pretty good one. Yeah, that was right up there. Uh, that would be my top two seeds. Oh. Sampras always went cross court, yes. though. Yes. But a million miles an hour. Well, the emotions are flowing early on, and that will to win remains diluted for this guy. It's going to be such an important shot Thank for him, you. isn't it? After all, well, I think Thank every you. shot's going to be important. I mean, the, I, well, the, the most important shot on the court, in my opinion, is Delpo's forehand. The reason he lost that point was because he had three right where he wants it, and nothing ended up happening. He mishit him a little bit, they came off slow. Tough hold. Good Jokovic test. Djokovic comes the through with flying colors. He leads 2-1 first set. They dearly love to get their hands on that trophy. One more time. Vaporizing forehands. And we know he can do this for four or five hours if need be. Djokovic needs to only go once to the forehand. Okay. Every time he's gone forehand, forehand, the second one Del Potro just unloads like you saw on that point. Go to the forehand so the backhand's exposed. Update on the last forehand from Del Potro. Uh, triple digits, Jimmy. Not just triple digits, 105. Mm, so don't sure change him. Yeah, 100, <laughs> 100 is always impressive. 105, now you're starting to get otherworldly worldly in some ways. Yeah. Although Jack Sock in the doubles final hit a 112 mile an hour forehand return. I just feel like there's so 13, many ways for Djokovic 15. to win this match. You know, Djokovic is a, is a great defender. He can scramble. He can, he can pass. He can dictate. You know, he serves pretty accurately. I feel like there's only one mm. way for Del Potro to win this match, and that's if he's absolutely cranking forehands and not waiting too long in the point to do it.
just like that. 14-15. It was going to be interesting for me to see if the power from the serve forehand was going to be enough for Djokovic to not be able to run every ball down. And early signs are that it, it could be if he can stay hot, if he can get first serves in at his, at his current clip. 75% he's serving, obviously, serve. early times. That'll give him so much confidence to serve this game's played. Just one point lost on the serve for Del Potro. Everybody trying to get a glimpse of this one. I wouldn't be surprised if that's somewhere back home, of course, his buddies from Tandil. Most of these guys he's grown up with in that suite. So been flown over Please to watch him play. Just don't forget to download uh, the app for all the latest score stats, match highlights, player new celebrity sightings. Everything available at US Open. Dot org. We've got a one cutaway of a nice. first celebrity that we saw. Uptown Girl. Billy Joel? No, Uptown Girl. Oh, I don't know. He sang <laughs> the song Uptown Girl. So he did? Yeah. But we saw a cutaway of the lady in the crowd. He was in that music video, was his wife for a couple of years. Come on, Jimmy. Christy Brink. Oh, that's right. Before Taylor's time, Billy Joel. That's why I didn't ask him the question. <laughs> See, Robbie, you, you're starting to understand. <laughs> Too true. You were talking about the importance of the backhand slice for both. Yeah, I just don't think that Djokovic should want to engage in that pattern. It, it's one thing to get Del Potro to take the hand off and slice to slow up the, play, the pace so he can have a rip, but to keep going, you know, slice backhand to slice back, and I think Del Potro wins that just through experience. He's hit a lot more yeah. slice back <laughs> exactly. than Djokovic in the last few years. That should 13, not have worked. 15. That approach to the Delpo forehand. It's Robbie, your least favorite play. Inside in, mm -hmm. approach shot. You leave cross court wide open. Yep. And the down the line's a pretty easy pass too. A little asterisk next to that one. All the time in the world to execute that passing shot. I'd be disappointed with Delpo. Surprise slider, second serve. Well, I just can't believe how much he's challenging Delpo's forehand just in general. He's serving a lot there with the first serve, with the second serve. We saw, I think it was the first point of this rally. He just, you know, I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there and just see, see if you can keep hitting it. the court so well with that forehand. Novak leads 3-2, first set championship match. Three, game to two, first set. 
Please. Still on serve after five games. Fifteen love. Confirmation that the roof is indeed closed. And, uh, we came out to the site this morning. It was already raining in downtown Manhattan. It's pretty much a cloud cover all around the area, especially here in Queens. That is the beauty of having the roof these days. Four Monday finals. Kind of uh, initiated the push to get the roof. Now we have it on both Louis Armstrong and here on Arthur Ashe. How important is the opening set, Taylor, and the outcome of this championship match? Well, I think you got to take it by a, a player by player case, right? Okay. Is how how important in this matchup or, or in their careers is it for Delpo to win? You know, the set against Djokovic. I mean, Djokovic's record is astonishing winning the first set. Yeah, certainly at majors that is the case. 108 30, and 2, Jimmy, 15. is Novak on a hard court at the majors. Only two losses. Do you know who they're against? Same guy, Stan Wawrinka. It is, that's correct. I swear this guy knows a little thing he's about tennis. He's won five of his last six major finals yeah. that he's been in. He has. Djokovic, and that one loss was also to Stan, a player that can overpower you Let's from the baseline. Del Potro can only overpower you from one wing, mm -hmm. so it's a little different. But that is the recipe, I suppose. Yep. And that was what you talked about earlier, Jimmy. That miss that Djokovic made there had nothing to do with anything except the, the sheer pace of that forehand. I mean, it wasn't particularly deep. It wasn't particularly wide. But it was pretty quick. Didn't have a lot of spin. It just got through the court in a hurry. There's no question over the course of two weeks surface is going to speed up three games all set the course pace index at a lot of the masters 1000s that i'm involved in the hard courts over the course of the week it, it does increase significantly taylor so whilst the course were relatively slow that was a general feeling amongst the players wasn't it i think over the past 14 days now it's got a little quicker but of course the roof is closed so how does that affect that things? That always makes it feel faster indoors when you go indoors it always makes it feel faster now some of the players say it always feels like indoors but there is more noise and it is just it is a true indoor court right now. Love. Got a tweet from Jennifer in Texas, and she wants to know, surely if the roof is closed, that would create more humidity, therefore the balls would fluff up more, therefore surely it should be slower and heavier, the conditions. It's interesting, but it is air-conditioned as well, and the air conditioning dries out the air. Do you think they should have been running the air conditioning when 
the roof was open, but it was so humid. Night matches, guys were yeah. soaked. That's Would good. that have helped? Probably a little. Wouldn't have helped the electricity bill. I mean, that's the first thing they tell you about your aircon, right? Don't leave the windows and the doors open. Including having the entire roof blown off, because that's what it would be like. You're right. Yeah. Obviously, it would cost a lot, and they would be running continuously the entire time you're playing those matches. Again, Djokovic. Not a strong hold from Novak. New balls, please, will change. Still on serve, 4-3 it is, first set. Djokovic leads four, games to three, first set. Will be crowned a US Open champion for the second time. <laughs> 15 love. Jimmy, you've been coming here for many, many years. Is this the hottest US Open you can remember? Well, maybe the most oppressive conditions is the wording I should use. For the longest time, yes. There's often been horrible days. Yes. But they don't normally last virtually the entire two weeks, which is what we got this year. A couple of days off, including these last two. Tell you, a lot of people ask me, or the other tournaments around the world or North America where the conditions get as tough as these? I mean, yeah, sure. I can remember playing in, uh, in, in Cincinnati, in Indianapolis, in D.C. I mean, it gets rough, and, and that's why it was a bit of a surprise to see so many people struggle. But, you know, when it's one person, you don't think much of it. But it was the field struggling here, yeah. so the conditions had to be rough. I have a memory of you pulling out of Indianapolis, I think, because of the heat. Played a couple of tie breaks maybe against somebody and you were done. Or is that not right? It could be could be just you got tired and finished. Select first serve. The the mat I played two tough matches in Indianapolis. One when I was just turning pro and creatine had just been coming out. And so my trainer wanted me to do this creatine, never done it, never did it before, never had an issue with cramping. After I played David Wheaton, full body cramps. I lost in uh, three sets, 7-5 in the third, and full body cramps. And so never had creatine after that either, mm -hmm. and never had cramps again. Um, the other match that was rough for me was I played Robbie Ginepri in the final, and I came into that tournament playing horrendous, absolutely horrendous tennis. So I spent two hours before every match serving and two hours after every match serving. And by the final, I was toast. <laughs> Well, the first little bit of pressure at all on the Del Potro serve from 40 love, a couple of errors, and now a little bit of a chance for Djokovic to apply some pressure. Dynamic balance at the end of range. Yes. Ryan Seacrest in the house. That was a sick point from Djokovic right from the start. It was a great serve from Del Potro. He crushed a couple of forehands, and this is where Djokovic is so tough because he moves so well and he actually can hit offensively from what should be a defensive position. been an unbelievable Djokovic. game from Djokovic. The first two points he lost, he actually had control of the point. He had an unbelievable return deep on the first one, and then was able to track down and neutralize the point and missed an easy ball on the second one. So he's played an incredible game. His return to serve this game is amazing because it's 
pretty good serving from Del Potro, and he's Please. not getting an edge in the, Thank you. in the point. His reward for that is a break point. First one of the match. Perseverance and patience provides the desired result for Novak. He Jokic strikes leads. first. Five games to three for sets. And for once, it's the forehand of Del Potro that lets him down. Let him down three or four times in that game eventually. And the part of the problem is he hit a lot of great shots and Djokovic put them all back deep enough. Thank he you. had that look in his eye, Djokovic, that he was not going to miss thank a you. ball Quite on please. that break point we thank just you. saw. That is Novak in lockdown mode. He's going to serve for the opening set here. One of the things when I was younger, I can remember having a conversation with Agassi about is, you know, he was big on knowing where the reset button is in the point. You know, where do you go when, when the player's hurting you and you just need to buy some time and reset? And, and the problem with Del Potro, if he's not going to get up there and crack some backhands and be threatening, and if he's going to chip backhands, Djokovic always has a reset button over there. You know, he can hit a heavy ball to Del Potro's backhand and slow the point down a little bit. And so how much pressure does that put on Del Potro's forehand? Huge. Like, and yeah. that's why it broke down, I think, yeah. the last game. Like a few more cuts like that, and then all of a sudden, you know, we get where Djokovic will say, well, shoot, I can't just put a ball to his backhand. He's going to start hurting me. So maybe that's the adjustment that Del Potro feels. Well, I can't just let him get away with rallying to my backhand. I've got to make him scared of both sides. Oh, I love the urgency there from Djokovic to get in. 30-15. Except that I don't have such confidence in Djokovic's first volley where he was coming in from. He did a great job with it, but I was worried for him when he hit the first volley. And then Del Potro again chose to chip rather than hit a two-handed passing shot. What is that? That's what he's thinking there. Well, I'll tell you what that is. That's knowing that Delpo's forehand's over there. I know that when I played against Federer and I played against Nadal, I missed a lot more shots than I did if I was playing somebody who's ranked 80 in the world. So when you're trying to hit a backhand line and you know that, that running forehand's on the other side, you're going to have to squeeze the line a little bit more. Squeeze here on serve at 30 all. Those three points on serve when you're serving for a set. Oh, such a relief. He's lost just four points when he's landed the first serve as Novak. Set point it is.
Set number one is on ice. It's gone the way Six of Novak Djokovic. He wins it six games to three. Jimmy Harris and Taylor Dent alongside me, Rob Koenig. That's jaw-dropping stuff. It's the variety, the defensive skills, and then his ability to turn defense into attack. Well, during the warm-ups, this is what we're talking about. When Djokovic is playing well, what do you do? You know, you, you attack him, and he's one of the best movers, defenders, out on the court, out on tour. And as soon as you leave something short, he's Please. so accurate. He does have an all... He has maybe the truest all-court game that we, we see today. the way the last 47 minutes has unfolded. I can't believe how good he's playing. The last 10 minutes yes. have been the, the minutes that have maybe won in this match. I know we're very early to say that, but the way these games have gone, it's hard to figure out how Del Potro is going to be able to break him down. He's hit some big shots in this game. And in the end, the point ends the same way. Djokovic winning it. points that Del Potro has to play back 15, to back 13. to back. There's a question for you. I wanted to ask you a quick question, Jimmy. And you as well, Taylor. Does Djokovic get enough credit for the amount of variety he's got in this game? I mean, probably not, because he's thought of as a defensive player, I think, by most people. Mm. But he's he's got it all, doesn't he? I think so, too. His tennis IQ is so good. I think that his default Thirty. setting is a little bit defensive. You know, if things are going bad, that's kind of what he would revert to the most. But again, does he have great defense? Absolutely. Can he stand on inside the baseline and dictate points with the best of them? Can he come to the net and finish off points? Absolutely. Does he serve well? Does he return well? Not really a whole lot that he doesn't do when he's when he's playing solid tennis. The first point of this game, a couple of foreign chips just to stay in it. It's quality ball striking for Del Potro. 13. It looks like Del Potro's got the message. I have to hit it even harder, <laughs> even bigger. First set, my normal game wasn't good enough, so I'm going to have to... Go big or go Thank home. You. Yes. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, players already. Thank you. Uh, please. And when you think about the guys who beat Djokovic when he's playing well, not not talking about when he was struggling or, or anything like that, but when he's playing well, I mean, Federer, he's not doing it with, you know, defense. He's dictating play. Nadal, he's dictating play. The only one that seems to be able to do it uh, is, is like Murray when they were, when they get in those cat and mouse rallies. But even then, I mean, the winning record between Djokovic and Murray is, is not good on Murray's side. You have to be able to do it. Stan, another one. You, you need a big game to worry him when he's playing well. Yes. And the 
pantheons of great shots. That Djokovic backhand is right up there. And again, intentionally dropping that one short and low. Knowing that Del Potro is going to slice it. And then just Djokovic, I mean, Del Potro defensive up at net. Never a great place to be. It's a shot that is forged in steel. It's given him a break point in this opening game. Djokovic had a mid-court forehand in that point, and yep. he didn't do anything with it. I know he was in the I'm not going to miss mode, yep. but that was an opportunity to really start taking control of this match with a set and a break lead. Well, you saw another slice return from Djokovic there, and today the percentage of returns that he's hitting, slicing, is 30% and topspin 70%. His previous rounds, 81% topspin, only 9% slice. So what that means to me is he's facing a big server, and he's just trying to survive and get in the point any way he can. This is the biggest server he's faced throughout the tournament. And as the numbers show, he's still making virtually every return. I mean, 83% in the first set. And I don't think he's missed one yet in this set. 127 mile an hour first serve from Del Potro. Came back with good length. That wasn't good enough, though. And that's typically the return that Joe that the Del Potro is used to seeing more often than not off of his big serve. And that's what makes I think you know, Djokovic one of the best returners of all time. I mean this step sort of scary for Del Potro is he Djokovic we think of him as a defensive player well he has two more winners than the big hitter. The big hitter has two less winners than the defensive player, right? Exactly. Yeah. That could be a very important hold in the context of First this game, set. Second set. Drop your guard, boom. That's when they break. 15 love. Of course, the flip side of that is you know, it saps your energy when it comes to breaking the guy's serve. Just to remind you how difficult this guy is to beat at the majors on a hard court when he wins the first set throughout the course of his career. He has 108 wins and just two losses. Those two losses both against Stan Wawrinka. Here at the US Open and once at the Australian Open. 40 loves. That was the mountain that uh, Del Potro will have to climb this afternoon.
2015. Del Potro can be pretty intimidating when he gets to the net. I know Djokovic has great return, but he's got length at the net, and Del Potro doesn't miss a lot of volleys. I think technically he's very sound, Jimmy. So what I'm saying is maybe let's explore that if you're Del Potro. Try to, he's trying to hit through him from the back of the court, and Djokovic is just getting every ball back. Copy and paste. And it's that little chip forward again. It gets him out of trouble. Yeah, it's amazing, the defense that he shows. He can also be offensive from those positions. It's a best defender maybe in history, Djokovic. Now, Taylor, you were a chip charger sometimes. Yeah. We've seen twice now chip cross court which leaves quite a bit of room down the line. Do you think he should chip down the middle? He doesn't really want to go down the line, it looks like, so. Well, I think the bigger problem is, is those two chips that, that Del Potro's doing are on Djokovic's terms. So Djokovic is in the middle of the court, you know, ready to defend, ready to move, and Del Potro's trying to chip a, a good approach here. If the opponent's in the middle, middle of the court, you gotta go deep. The reason you go deep on a chip when they're in the middle of the court is you just want to try and cut off all their angles. You know what I mean? You rush them a little bit so they maybe can't get a full swing. Uh, if the opponent's out of the court, well, then just chip it away. Chip it short, low, and wide, and it's good enough. But I, I think I agree with you. I mean, Del, Del Potro should look to come in more, but it's got to be on his terms. It can't be in those scenarios where Djokovic is, is enticing him to come in. Del Potro not content on that one to get in a little chip backhand cross court exchange. Yeah, good footwork there to get around that the was backhand. Quick. Much better. An hour into the 50th final of the Open Era. Del Potro is pumping up the volume here a little bit on the serve. This one was 136 miles an hour. Not this time. Once again, Djokovic with all the answers. 30 on. If you're going to hit a tweener, tweener lob is the shot to attempt. That's in vogue right now. And it's it, in a few of them. Yeah. It's the one that you might be able to win the point with. Mm. Look at Pui pulled off an unbelievable one against Marcus Beck earlier on in the tournament. That was a huge point, too. I think it was like a set point. Mm -hmm. That was just a lesson for you at home when you're trying the, the club player. When okay. you're doing the tweener, try tweener law. It works better. Got to challenge it. I don't know. It was really close. 
it's too big of a moment. He's been struggling too much. I mean, he threw everything at Djokovic in that rally. Oh, it's definitely long. 30-14. This means it's back-to-back -back service games now that Del Potro faces a break Thank point. You. Save two in his previous service game. Coach looking on pensively. Suffocating his opponent with length once again. Novak very much in charge here at a set and a break. He'll have to defy enormous odds. He wants to come back and win this match against Djokovic after losing the opening stanza. 15. Feeling has a little bit of that feeling that uh, the Chilich Nishikori match in the beginning. Chilich was just playing flawless for the first set and a half, and we said that you know for this match to come back even and, and for Chil uh, Nishikori to have a chance, he yes. needs some help. I feel it's similar here. Like Djokovic is just playing so well for this first set Please, and a break. Ladies and gentlemen, you know Del Potro is going to need some help you. from Djokovic here. Djokovic's level is going to have to drop. Kidding me? How good was that? 30 15. See, the problem when you're Del Potro in this match is even when he plays a perfect point, mm -hmm. he still doesn't win it. Yeah. In the last half hour, the first half hour, actually, Del Potro had more opportunities than Djokovic did, but in the last. 37 minutes now or so. It has been Djokovic at a level that Del Potro can't get to, it seems. Meryl Streep. Speaking of the Please. best of the best. Second I'll put you gentlemen on the spot here. When Novak is playing his best tennis, Roger is playing his best tennis, Rafa is playing his best tennis, who's the best? Who wins the, those matchups? Obviously, the surface makes a difference. That's the problem. So Nadal on clay. Yep. I think Djokovic on hard. Thank you. 
and I, I guess Fetter on grass. Okay. Go along with that, yeah. Taylor. I can't argue with that too much, right? Okay. You've just kept a lot of fans very That's happy right. with that it answer. That's right. You give everybody a win, uh, Jimmy. But I also think it's fairly accurate. Yeah, Djokovic might good. have a chance even on the grass. Love 15. get the feeling that Del Potro is going to be pushing the envelope a little more. He has to. Oh. He is pushing the envelope a little bit more, but it's not really working. Even when he crushes five ground strokes, Djokovic is there. I know this sounds like a ridiculous strategy, but what about, because sometimes Djokovic is pretty far back, trying to throw a drop shot in there once in a while. Well, I think it's getting to the stage where Del Potro's tried a little bit of everything. So, you you know, keep trying. That's, more things. They, that's exactly right. Hard to base your hopes on a tremendous day of drop shotting. <laughs> Good night to that one. 30, 15. I mean, tough way to hold serve, right? <laughs> He's having to play a lot of good points. But I mean, I think at a certain stage, you just have to say if you're Del Potro, look, I've tried a little bit of everything. And it's more likely that Del Potro, something's going to go wrong and he's going to come off the boil or get nervous and get tight. So I'm just going to go back to playing tennis how I like to play tennis. And hopefully Djokovic gets nervous, get tight. He's not immune to that. We've seen that plenty of times before. Or maybe, as you said earlier, play the crowd a little bit. Djokovic hates that. Hates that in Del Potro. That's not really his personality to kind of feed into it, but you know, drastic times. play the best points that you want. 30, 30. That tsunami size wave of attack will just keep coming at you. Well, in general, two things stop a great offense. Foot speed and depth. Djokovic has both, so <laughs> that's the problem. Mm -hmm. In spades. It's a missed return. Every day of the week. Good hold. But it's Djokovic who leads by set and 3 2. To his very best. That forehand. Love 15. It's 
so important to win that first point against the serve. That's another one of those forehands that Jimmy likes. Almost as big as his, 102 miles an hour that one was. You see Jimmy's arm shaking there. A little different with those 65 square inch rackets, Jimmy. I did get to 100 on a forehand. Okay. But not 102 and 105. Okay. Was it downwind? It might have been. <laughs> In altitude. <laughs> Jimmy's not six foot six, by the way. Certainly had one of the biggest forehands back in the 80s. That was the pretty close, the so worth the challenge. Left far side line. The ball was called out. Djokovic has hit four or five balls exactly like that. And they all just touched the line, it yep. seems, in this match. On the returns, he's done that a couple of times. Just goes to show you the margins in the sport are minuscule, right? <laughs> Cram can up the volume. And try to engage the crowd as well. He's got to. I think he's got to, and that's big. This is a huge opportunity for him to try and equalize this second set. I, that's got to be his favorite shot, the forehand straight down the line. He goes for that whenever he sees half a chance. Well, that one, he was outside the court. He didn't even hit it straight. He still almost hit it cross court to get it in <laughs> and down the line, but that was amazing. He's bringing out the wrecking ball. And I don't know if anybody saw Djokovic's reaction there. Not happy. 30, 40. Not and happy after that 99 mile an hour forehand. Ladies and gentlemen, was it the crowd reaction that made him unhappy or was it the fact that he's down break point? Yeah, exactly. All of the above. Yeah. During the points, thank you. Please, First thank break you. point of the match. Thank for Del Potro, gentlemen. That was brave. the best players have the mentality well I'll back my best shot against yours. Djokovic has given the crowd a piece of his mind tell him to be quiet Ooh. but that's what Delpo needs. I don't think Djokovic telling the Argentine crowd <laughs> to be quiet is going to work or have it's not gonna have a lot of success in that area. It might have the opposite effect yes. about you guys but I, I don't know if he's totally committed to that short central forehand I just feel like he's hitting it and he's moving back like he could be a bit more aggressive hit it come in behind it which player are you talking about Novak there on that short um, central yes, forehand you're there. right he hasn't but I think part of the reason is he's he's been by the way getting down to zero a couple of times and not been warned there it is again Let's it's touch and go. Alison Hughes giving him the benefit of the doubt. Well, well, well. Back-to-back back for an unforced errors. 
has fired this man up. He is back in business. Three games all seven cents. And we are back on serve here in the second set. Three games apiece. It's amazing how a crowd can affect momentum. Djokovic, it, you couldn't see a way where Del Potro could win. Yeah, he played a great game there, but eventually the crowd and the reaction from the crowd started to bother Djokovic a little bit, and he's that level that I said Del Potro can't get to, Djokovic has thank come you. down in the last Please, game and a half. Gentlemen, we'll see you. how long that will last. Please, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Interesting to hear some numbers on the Potro Fawn in that previous game when he broke his average for the matches 80 miles an hour. But he cranked it up in that last game to 85 on average. So that's definitely, as you were suggesting, Jimmy, he had to go bigger. Please. The adrenaline from the crowd Please. always worth a couple extra miles per hour yeah. as well. And as you said, Taylor, needed a little bit of help from Djokovic, and he got it on the last two points, didn't he? Working the momentum beautifully. Unbelievable the level drop from Djokovic. I feel like Del Potro, like you said, he hasn't risen much, but he's maintained, but Djokovic has certainly dropped. Del Potro, as we showed you, five miles an hour bigger right. on the forehand the last game, but it's really the crowd and Djokovic that have allowed this comeback from Del Potro. Nine of the last 12 points have gone the way of the Argentine. He's back in business here. 4 3 at his second set. You normally get me on those. It's good. Thanks for the layup there. You know, Tom Cruise was the main actor. Who was his female counterpart there? Next level questioning this. Yeah, so you got me. Okay. Once again, he'll pass on the back to Jimmy. I think it was Kelly McGillis. You're right. That's a bit of a guess, but I'll take it. Yeah. Better to be lucky than good, right? Yeah, exactly. Stops the rod. He lost 10 of the last 12 points. Did Novak before winning that one. His focus has gone a little bit to the crowd. 
They're making noise. He's not enjoying it, as that is often the case for him. Yep. That's world class. Give me some love. He gets to him so much, it's unbelievable. He's trying to work in his favor, and I tell you what, I would have loved to have heard the crowd if Del Potro would have won that point. They would have blown the top off of the stadium. Even though Djokovic played Thank a brilliant you. point there, never relented. He wants some love. His, his box <laughs> stood up. That's about it, though. <laughs> 13 shot rally. Getting tight on the serve again. That's an absolute screamer. Slightly amazed that Del Potro could hit a winner against Djokovic from as far back as he was. But it had the type of pace that even Thank Djokovic you. couldn't quite make a move towards. Still behind overall the forehand winners, but ahead in this set. Taylor, do you think Del Potro has the ability still to flick the wrist on that ball? Because that's what two-handers do when they're pushed out there and someone's come in, they give you a little flick, and he keeps slicing. It's not really enough, I don't think. I think the flick around the ball, maybe yes, but the drop, I think that's what's gone. I, and I know my wife, Jenny, had similar uh, wrist surgery, and she couldn't drop the racket anymore. Oh, he's missed it. And you Christy wasn't happy about this miss. Well, he set it up perfect. He had just about any shot he wanted. The, the short little volley cross or a lob back over Delco. <laughs> or hit him. I mean, you <laughs> could have done any yeah, of those It's a things. big target, right? right? Yeah. Wait, please. Wait, please. Jimmy. Wow. Advantage Del Potro. Just unbelievable. Again, we just keep talking about it. I, I just think that the more of these points that Del Potro wins, they don't Thank count you. for just one point. They count for Please, many. I just think that Thank it just you. is going to keep getting under the skin of Djokovic. Got himself a break point.
remember that point if Del, po Del Potro doesn't continue to play this well and win this set. Because he had an 81 mile an hour little cheeser serve to work <laughs> with. Yeah. And he didn't do anything with it. Long game this one. As usual, he doesn't get the serve off in time, and he doesn't get the one. Yeah. That was the first glaringly obvious one. I think the yeah, others were 50-50. They were close, you're right. Yeah. I think uh, the umpires are going to be a little gun shy to get too involved. Yep, and after Carlos Ramos was front and center yesterday. Allison Hughes using a bit more discretion today. The Potra fans probably hoping that she'll uh, call him out if he does go over time on serve. Got to be fair to both players, remember. clock on this occasion. Oh, look what I found! Well, you've got to give them plenty to cheer about, and that's exactly what Del Potro Thank you. has done in the last two service games of Novak. Please, Guess is right. Players are waiting. There's still a lot of work to do there, though. You know what he did Please. well? It was interesting there, and I don't know if he did it on purpose, but he actually turned his hip sideways as if he's running to the backhand, and when a player sees you not facing the court, you always go behind the player, and then he stopped and got back. Please... now in this game and look the the difference in this match as we said is Del Potro has to start going bigger and one of the ways you go bigger you got to hit it lower over the net or it's going to go long like that last forehand did so you see the difference quite a big difference in inches five inches but net clearance from first set to second set yeah remember it up the average forehand speed from 80 to 85 game now over 10 minutes in duration Let's second serve Djokovic holds serve here. He may have wrestled back a little bit of momentum in the next service game for Del Potro. I would expect to be fairly difficult. Still has to hold Djokovic. But. Do 
Jesus. And I always find that's a sign of nerves. That's a sign of tension. You know, we saw him. You, you go for cheap points. You know, low percentage cheap points. And you know, the, the one where he had the huge open court and hit behind Del Potro and Del Potro. You know, anytime you see players just go behind when you've got a whole court open, you're just looking for that cheap, quick point. Made the adjustment this time. Djokovic. That's a safer play anyway. If you're Djokovic, you got to make Del Potro pass you with a back in on the run. Yeah. Even if he guesses right, you got a way better chance than if he's waiting there on the forehand. Young Paul Boy going above and beyond the call of Judy there. Sweat drops all over the court. Because the longer these kind of games go on, the more importance they assume in the context of a set. And in the context of momentum, that's these type of games. Whoever wins these type of games Thank takes you. a little something from it normally. The Potro right. working the momentum beautifully. I mean, he was down a break in the second set. calling for more energy from his fans. Please. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Massive. It is jaw dropping stuff. The sound the ball makes when it comes off his racket. It's something unique. He's got the long levers, the big swing arc. Please, thank you. And like all the biggest forehands on tour, that elbow is straight on contact with the ball. Maximizing that leverage that he has. Please.
what a marathon game this is turning out to be. That's just good tennis from Djokovic. Just unbelievable grit and nerves to be able to play an aggressive point. And you know he feels like th this match, this set, is a moment away from slipping outside of his control. It's a pattern of play that's worked well. Whenever he's come into that backhand side, he's been more successful and not net points won for Novak in this set. A healthy 9 of 11. And it's always much safer to come in against a flatter stroke. You know, when you, when you come in against a top spinning stroke, they just have more options. That's how loud it is down there. It seemed like Djokovic did not want to add a new ball, and they lost a ball, and they've only got, you know, a couple games till new balls, so Djokovic obviously wants less balls out there, because the more those balls get hit, the slower they are, the more Del Potro's offense is negated. So he requested to not add a new ball into the mix. I thought you'd like that new ball just to keep it in your pocket when you get the game point and just bring it out with a slider on the first serve. My dad has a bad story about that. <laughs> I love the way that they're able to just sort it out amongst themselves. What's going on? Okay. Civilized conversation. Good friends away from the court, these two. It was 20 minutes now in the making, the service game. Delpo's got to surf after this, too. No changeover. Finally, Novak Djokovic puts this eighth game to bed. A mammoth hold. I would be a little surprised if Del Potro doesn't have a difficult service game here after what we just saw, 20 minutes and 32 seconds Ago. of the game, yes. <laughs> and with the chances to break, the player fans don't realize it's not a changeover. They've been in their seats <laughs> for you, and a half an hour. Players are waiting, thank you. Please, thank you. Could be one of the longest service games of the match. 15. She snuck the ball in that he didn't want, and he missed the return and. Said, let me see that ball, and he said it to her. But fifteen. 
One thing with Del Potro, yes, he hits the forehand massively, but that forehand should have been taken a little earlier in the court. He knew Djokovic was going to be slicing a forehand. It wasn't going to have a lot on it. Take time away that way as well, not just with the pace you hit with. Take that one a little earlier, but you suddenly can't play like this. That's what he said there, that ball bouncing right around where those sweat marks are. He's just pointing up to the roof there, guys. Is he suggesting that perhaps... Well, they keep wiping off the same spot, and that's yeah. a strange place for it to be a sweat mark is in, in the middle of the court there. Holds. The Potro, the Potro with a 5 4 lead here in set number two. A couple of French opens as well. 15. opening points from Del Perdi. He'll be disappointed. He's made Novak work so hard on his previous service games. He's lost on over 20 minutes. He's got a relatively quick hold. Pressure's right back on Novak here. Serving to stay in the set.
Djokovic. Very nice. Once again, this play in the forecourt has been outstanding. Five games all second sets. As Taylor said, it is easier to volley off of the type of ball that Del Potro hits. He doesn't have a lot of movement to it, so these guys are accustomed to seeing the ball bending. When Del Potro hits the pass, that's not the case. time here. Champai once again just pausing the serve clock. Energy feels a little lower, right? It, it feels like it just kind of settled down a bit after the beginning of that second set when Del Potro broke back. I think this is danger time for Del Potro. You know, this is going to give Djokovic an opportunity just to calm down, refocus, and start playing the tennis that he was playing for 45 minutes. Del Potro can fix that by one big forehand and get the crowd riled up. I mean, that's what he's going to have to keep on doing throughout this match. counting. Oh. Dropping the hammer at 127 miles an hour. Clearly winning the ace race in this set. Looking good. He's liking it too. Del Potro leads 6 5, second set. He's serving to take us into a tiebreaker is the serve. get the feeling like it's only a matter of time before Del Potro does hit that one big shot, that one big winner to reignite the crowd. It just feels like they're waiting. One thing that you can be sure of is if this goes to a tie break and Del Potro wants to be a U.S. Open champion again, 
yes. he's going to have to win that tie break. It's going to be very difficult to come back against Djokovic after over two hours already, and you find yourself two sets to love mm -hmm. down. Yeah. In other words, you've got nothing to show for all that amount of time that you've invested. And you haven't played bad, and you've had the crowd with you helping you along the way. It's such a tipping point, isn't it? You know, as former players, the psychology inside your head. I mean, a set all. You're on a par. Two sets to love down. Feel it's like a it, high mountain to climb from there. Two days on horseback behind the opponent. So perhaps fitting. Uh, it's one of the longest Six sets goals, sets. at this 2018 Time US break. Open is going to be decided by a tiebreaker. Both players will receive an additional challenge. Thank you. They spit the spoils you, and tiebreakers when they've played each other. Play, please. Of each one four. Del Potro has won 12 of his last 14 tiebreakers played at the US Open. It's impressive. He better make it 13 or 15. He <laughs> does. Okay, here we go. Amazing how many times this match Djokovic off of huge serves. That was 132 mile an hour serve in the corner. He is in trouble, but his ball finds the court with decent Please, length. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. important. Don't want to let him get off to a good start. Stay within touching distance. This is somewhat shocking here. Yeah, it was a really bad just miss. A routine cross-court rally ball he was trying to play and somehow found the net. Lost a little bit of balance as he hit that backhand. Finally getting hold of that backhand. And how many times have we seen Del Potro with this flat backhand? You've got to cover the line. Flat shots are the most dangerous up the line. Flat passes are the most dangerous up the line because they can hit it quick, keep it low. They can't hit a sharp angle. They have to take so much pace off of it so you have time to run over there and cut it off. And if they just try and rip it cross court flat, it carries so deep. So you can just react to that one. You've got to cover the line when you come in against a flat shot. I mean, if you've been watching Del Potro at all in this tournament, it's 99.9% yeah. of the time the backhand pass has goes to. down the line. Yeah, has to. Let's I know Nadal didn't finish, but he got Nadal with a couple of those as well. to serve. The ball was called in. Definitely worth the challenge. He's going to lose that point anyway. He was. Hitching his pits, yeah. Oh, yeah, well, well. Thank you.
Oh, he is just electrifying this crowd, isn't he, with that forehand. And here come his boys in full voice. because he's hitting it 105 <laughs> miles an hour and a few inches over the net. That's how occasionally you might miss one. <laughs> Anybody can make that in the tiebreaker second set of the yeah. U.S. Open final. A couple of mini breaks already in the second set tiebreaker. Back on serve. It's a pattern of play that has served him well. Do you think Del Potro should, a couple of these second serves, he's had an opportunity to run around and hit a forehand, and he has not done it. He's just hit, started the point with a backhand, and eventually he gets out maneuvered more often than not. And we know that that second serve can get tight to give him something to fear, Taylor. No, I, I agree. I, I don't disagree 100%. I think Djokovic has hit enough little sliders to the forehand to maybe dissuade that a little bit, but he has. He has yeah. done that. Yeah. But not on the nervous points, but you would think of as a nervous point Thank he throws you. in the 79 mile an hour <laughs> little Thank kicker. You. Yeah, don't. Please. Djokovic has won. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. 62% of second Please. serve points in this match, and that's a lot. That is. For a second serve that is susceptible. The last one just 80 miles an hour. And if that goes in, that, I think that's a disaster. But, it, you know, it, you can't let that shot beat you when you're coming in to Delpo's backhand. Let the angle beat you. Don't let that one. That play has been profitable, however, when he squeezed that backhand. Try and pass me. More often than not, he's come out on top. Massive point right here. Let's first serve. Let's first serve.
no jokes here. This is very important times in a Grand Slam final. Not often that Novak misses with that trusty backhand of his. Slightly worried about what we've seen in this tiebreak from Del Potro. A couple of forehands that he's missed mm. because he's been hitting it a little harder and a little lower than his normal rally shot that he's comfortable with. And under pressure, it's hard to, to make those shots. So now Djokovic with that late mini break, a chance to serve out this second set tiebreak. misses on that forehand for Del Potro. Yeah. Del Potro worked so hard that point. And finally, after being pushed around the entire point, he had a forehand right where he likes it, running around perfectly in the center of that left box. Thank somehow you. pushed it wide. Please the upshot of that for Djokovic. Please. It's two set points. Got it. Novak Djokovic wins set number two. 95 minutes in the making, but crucially, he's got a two sets to love lead. Getting his hands on number 14. He will start the third set. Jump right into it, gentlemen. Novak, an astonishing 182 and one. On his two sets to love up at the majors. I want to know who the one Please. loss was against. So when Novak wins the first two sets with any Grand Slams, he's 182 wins, just one loss. Well, it has to be Stan. 13. The first two sets that he's won. Chilich? Nope. Stan, he lost, excuse me, against Stan, he won the first set, not the first two, Jimmy. Right, but we had him at 180 and two, so obviously whoever this person is, it should have been 180 something and three, because he lost, he won the first set. First serve. And lost. Great mix up from Del Potro. Again, I think I think two things are gonna have to happen for this, this set to be different. We need more of, if you're in Del Potro's corner, you need more of what happened in the middle 
of that second set. And what, what happened is the crowd was engaged, so you have to take it on yourself to engage the crowd. And the other thing that needs to happen, Robbie, I felt like Del Potro covered up his backhand better with the forehand, went big with the forehand, ran around a lot more, and when he did see a backhand, he went for a lot more as well. We saw a lot more winner down the lines. Toward the later stage, I felt like Del Djokovic was getting at the backhand a lot more. the only player ever to beat Novak from two sets to love down. 2010 French Open. Jurgen Meltzer. Remember that, Jimmy? Taylor, I do you remember? I can't believe I forgot that. I'm actually irritated now. Of course, that was on a clay court. And it's Roland Garros. What an athlete. What a way to start the third set. Relentless is the word that comes to mind. Too good. Now, I did feel Del Potro should try a few drop shots just because Djokovic is so far back. Yep. But the thing, if you hit a decent drop shot, the shot you have to take away is drop shot reply. And Del Potro didn't really get a good jump on the ju on the drop shot reply from Djokovic. Taylor Dent's Twitter feed is lighting up with all the Argentine fans texting him to say, hang on, hang on, he has come back from two sets to love down on a couple of occasions. Don't forget to mention that. Well, one occasion was against Chilich Davis Cup, one game but I think the more significant occasion was last year yep. at this tournament against Dominique Team. That's right, out on the grandstands court. Wasn't feeling well at all. Of course, who was a major, major contributing factor in that comeback? The fans, right? 
And Argentine fans really getting behind him, buoying his spirits. Got him back into the match. I think he said a couple of match points at least. One of the slowest aces we've seen in a long time. 98 miles an hour, but it had an amazing movement short of the box. His first ace of the match. This match will be world number three when the rankings come out tomorrow. Currently, it's Del Potro who's sitting at number three. That was old school tennis there. That was chip charge down the line, cover the line, but then you're supposed to make the ball. Yeah. Stamp those feet, make your presence be felt at the court. That's what I used to do, Jimmy. Patrick Rafter used to make a whole lot of noise when yes. he came running in. Yes, he did. I mean, those Queenslanders, they're a different breed, aren't they? I think so. Big shout out to Johnny Millman oh, on a fantastic tournament. So, Queenslander himself is John. don't see a high percentage way around the problem for Del Potro. I mean, he's just got to get four hands and he's got to crush them. You know, it, like we were saying in the middle of the second set, he upped his average miles per hour five per forehand. Mm -hmm. That's how he did it. The crowd got excited. I just, I just don't see a high percentage way around it. It's not an easy smash. New balls, please, He's done well there, Snowdrack. Working Jordan large and very much in charge here. for Djokovic a number of times. That's Federer's play. The short slice make you come in when you're not that comfortable. When Federer does it, his ball's a little knifier looking than Djokovic's short slice. reading everything that Del Potro throws at him. That one was ridiculous because he took the return early, but he didn't get much on it. Del Potro rifles 
A forehand swinging volley to the other side, and he has to hit a half volley. I mean, look at this pickup right there. It's not like he had time to react to that. To lose that shot to shoelaces. We haven't seen him go for that serve very much. The second serve, big T. Huge timing for that down 15-30. Almost feel like Djokovic is kind of finding his form again, his solid form, where it's just going to be too good. So this is a huge game for Del Potro to hang on to. Okay, that love 30 point, the, the relatively easy forehand miss from Novak. Yeah. All day long at Patton to play has given him a lot of joy. And the other problem too is, I mean, how much more confidence is, is Djokovic going to have being up two sets to love? He's going to be a little bit more free, so he's going to get even more benefit when Del Potro does play a little bit passive. He's going to just step up and go for it. Chance to take the ball by the horns here. Break point for Novak. That'll work. Yes. This guy destroying the spirit of Del Potro. Del Potro hit five bullets, three of them off the line. And there's just no way around this guy. He wants to hear the love. Crowd wants to see more, so they're even going to be more for Del Potro. Got himself thank another you. great point here, gentlemen. Please, already, thank you. Please. There it is. That Novak return. Instantly changing the points. Djokovic leads three against one third set. That length that he's able to get is quite extraordinary. A 
Hearts got a three games to one lead. The thank finishing you. line now well within sight. Players are ready, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Remember to stay connected to the US Open on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and YouTube. Please. Everything you need to know about the Open at usopen.org. Call that one out. Champa saying she's not going to touch it if it's that far away from her. Got to go with the, the Lions person. And Potra had a good look at it, so they'll have a do over. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Him with one of those passing shots and that's where if Djokovic I feel if he comes to the net and he feels like he cannot hit a winner with a volley you just go back to the backhand because Del Potro can pass you either which way he wants on the forehand side the backhand I feel like you only have to cover 60% of the court it's one department where Del Potro is ahead of Novak but only slightly. Yep. That's the problem. And that department, he needs to be well ahead. That's a lot more disciplined play coming to the net. If I'm Marion Vida, I'm loving everything about that point. Oh, yeah. And especially the final court. Just squeezing the back end, right? that <laughs> I'm sticking around 15, has a tiny tiny bit of feel like the second set and Del Potro getting behind a break and then really opening up and going for even more and actually making a few of those big forehands and getting the crowd involved so still got to find a way to get this break back and it would bring the crowd to its feet and annoy Djokovic again. It's probably happening too early in the set. Maybe. again copy and paste yeah, it's pretty high percentage I mean how many how many of the passing shots 
that Del Potro's attempted have been slices. I think an extremely high amount. And that's why his hit numbers are so please. good. 24 of 31 points won by Novak in the forecourt. Almost 80%. That wasn't my strong point. It's close enough. begging for an overrule there from the chair umpire. That one was out, he's saying. <laughs> Please call it out, he's saying. Chase review just confirming to us that it was indeed in. Rally length, just over six shots. Interesting. Serve and volley kicker to the backhand. We've been saying all along Del Potro can't really manipulate the wrists enough to get it cross court. Well, he did that time. Cross court and low. Been so disciplined in peppering the Del Potro back in. Just came unstuck there, did Novak. A break point opportunity for the Argentine. Time violation. It's just a warning. Of course, if it happens again, he will lose a first serve. And 
each and every time infringement thereafter is just a loss of first serve. He's got him! Oh, Del Potro is back in business! It's Novak though, we've still got the lead, three games to two. Delpo looking to square things up here at three games apiece. Let's just move. So many of those same forehands this match. Just pulling that inside in forehand too much wide. That happens to a lot of players actually. As while you're moving over, while you're running around, Thank it tends you. to make the ball go a little bit further to the left the way you're running. And players don't always account for it. So inside in often is missed wide when it's missed. That momentum that we were speaking about. Del Potro with seven of the last ten points. Sebastian Prieto, the Potro's coach. to Del Potro hanging in there down two sets two long sets down a break yes Djokovic played maybe a little bit of a letdown game there to give the break back This was a similar situation in the second set where Del Potro had break points. And he had, remember, the, the sitter backhand, the second serves that he didn't take advantage of. Feels like less energy from the crowd this time than last time this happened, just slightly. Yeah. Oh, second set, it was the crowd was really getting involved. But if I'm Del Potro, I want the energy this game yes. when Djokovic is serving, not necessarily when I'm serving. Yeah. It's a big forehand winner some point in the next couple of points. He's got to get I the agree. crowd rolling. He's got to force uh, it almost. Yes. Oh. Also think as well that the balance of the match is different in the second set versus being down two sets to love. It is, but it's more imperative for the crowd, the ones that want Delpo to win, to, mm -hmm. to help him out even more.
as a Mr. Smash today, and sometimes, you know, that can be his, his Achilles. Okay, so one pet in the play. That has been outstanding from him tonight. It's been that off the ball movement. Moment he recognizes a good shot to the backhand of Del Potro. He's in. He pays the price. Here comes some energy now. That was a strange shot Djokovic hit in the middle of that point. Had sort of a sitter forehand and tried a bit of a fake drop shot. But Petro didn't bite and then he got control and applied pressure coming in one of the few times he's done that. Happened a lot to Del Potro today, and it, it's strange because I don't think he's a guy that normally does that at all. Well, his forehand stroke is a lot more through the ball than, than someone a little bit more vertical, so he should shank a, a little bit less. Exactly. But it could be credit to the consistency of Djokovic's depth, too. He's not used to somebody tracking down his best shots and putting this many past three quarter court. To steady the ship here at Novak. It's difficult against anybody to run around your backhand and hit it from the alley. Yes. But against Djokovic, forget it. Yeah. But he has no choice, right? I guess. I mean, it's, it's the best available option. It just makes you defy the percentages if you want to beat him. It does indeed just steady the Djokovic ship. Two games away. 4-3 it is. Gets to love Lee Jovek Novak in pole position of course was up a break earlier on in the set and has let it slip it was in the fourth game and Djokovic broke to go up 3-1 and remember folks he did have a game points to take a 4-1 lead didn't convert Game on here in the third. Jimmy Eris alongside uh, me, Rob Koenig. Of course, we've got Taylor Dent as well. Dissecting every single point. Be a horrible feeling playing Djokovic. Knowing that even your best serves they come back mm -hmm. and they come back with depth so you have to win four points almost every game you have to earn them against a guy that defends so well it's difficult to do when you get down to crunch time that's another perfect example 15, yep just perfect serve Djokovic on the full stretch, able to put that return about an inch from the baseline, and then what are you going to do? You're dealing with one of the fastest guys on tour, one of the most solid guys on tour. 
in that in that case it was also no pace an inch from the baseline you got to create all your own forget it Your very first double fault. Not Ladies only and gentlemen, please do not make a noise between fifth and second serves. It is very distracting and off-putting to the players. Thank you. Please remain quiet. Listen, Hughes trying to keep the New York crowd down. Fast, too strong, too solid, and right now simply too good. No reaction whatsoever from Djokovic. He is already focusing on this next service game. Well, it's a pretty important game, really. Unbelievable <laughs> serving for the match and the title. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Players are ready, please. Thank you. Serving for 14th major in the third US Open. seen this before haven't we what in the world was the reason for that drop shot he's chopping down del potro with just relentless mm -hmm. ability to put the ball in and deep and eventually del potro will crack that time it was djokovic the crack first for no reason emotions rarely make sense jimmy <laughs> That would definitely would have put the crowd on his feet. Serving down love 30. Woof.
please. Oh, how's that for a little bit of variety? Steely resolve. Oh, we've seen plenty of that today. We expected nothing less. And after three hours and 15 minutes, Djokovic is at championship you. point. It's a third US Open title for the serve. And he joins the great Pete Sampras in third spot with 14 major titles. And today, he has just been better in every department than Juan Martin Del Potro. Three hours and 16 minutes of high octane tennis, and it's Djokovic who prevails in straights. 6-3, 7-6, Well, we said at the outset, I, I thought the most important shot of the match was going to be Del Potro's forehand. And he actually hit it pretty well. What was unbelievable from Djokovic is he was fast enough to track down those huge forehands and able to keep the ball deep. His defense was just simply too good. His offense was great today. He just didn't have to play it that much. His defense was incredible. To tour level. Goes on to beat Roger Federer, probably one of the biggest upsets we've seen in a long, long time. And actually forced Djokovic into a difficult match. I know it was straight sets, but they were having 25, 26, 27 shot rallies point after point. And Djokovic was feeling the effects of that match as well.